10 dates. Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to uh, look at capturing packets from multiple interfaces in uh, Wireshark. So here we go. We've got my laptop here with a Wi-Fi and an Ethernet port. The wireless port is going to be used to send data through the wireless access point combo box that most people own at home. That's physically connected to a Netgear switch. It's a GS108. It's a manageable switch. Uh, so I can use this as a poor man's tap and mirror that data that goes through the router back to my computer. So I should be able to see the packet leaving via Wi-Fi and then see it after it's left this router. A couple of other notes. Uh, my Ethernet port, I've disabled the IP stack on it just so my laptop doesn't decide to send the packet out this route. And, uh, and that's pretty well it for now. So let's move on. A couple of things about Wireshark. We've got in the capture options, we've uh, checked off both of these boxes, the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet. Um, if you look uh, closely here, it'll actually say Ethernet and it says none, so you know IP address. And here on the wireless, you can see that it has an IP address. It's important that I have the same filter on both sides because this is a NAT box. I'm using the destination IP as my filter. If this was a router, it almost doesn't matter. You can use uh, any IP filter. Uh, that you wish, including your own. And this also eliminates all the extra stuff my machine barfs out over the network. A couple of other notes. Um, as far as the access points go, I've got uh, multiple access points for the same SSID. So I just ran Insider here, or Insider, depending how you want to actually pronounce that. And I verified that indeed I am talking to that access point closest to me, not the other one across the office. So let's get into it. So first thing we're going to do is um, going to get myself a command prompt and a Wireshark. So there we are. I'm going to go back to capture options here and I'm ready to go. I'm going to hit start. First thing I want to do is take that command prompt and just simply ping that IP address that I was looking for or that I have in my filter. And now I should see in the background you see a multiple packets flying around. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is uh, start up uh, Internet Explorer or Exploder as some people like to say and type that same IP address in here and we get a prompt and I'm just gonna hit escape and unauthorized good enough. I just want some packets. It's the only reason why I'm doing this and I'm gonna come back here and hit stop. So a couple of things. Uh, number one, uh, if you take a look in your trace file you'll notice that um, the first thing, oh I'm sorry, first things first, in the uh, title bar uh, Wireshark has now said two interfaces. I'm capturing from two interfaces. And if you had a delta time up, which a lot of people like to have, including myself, you'll notice that the delta times are negative. See that? Because this packet actually came out before that one. So it's kind of confusing when you look at it this way. And we'll take that out in a moment. It also says here in the detail pane, there's interface one. You'll see interface one. And as I arrow down, you'll see zero now, you see? So that's how it's telling you which interface that packet was related to. So zero or one. And again, we'll go through that in another moment. The other thing I've done here is I've added the identification um, value here as a column. Now, what I'm going to do is just right click on it, remove the column. I'm going to add it again just to show you how I did that. So because I know this is going through a NAT box, and I do know the NAT box fairly well, I know the identification number does not change as you go through the NAT box. So first thing I'm going to do is just right click on that and you can actually add this, apply as a column. And when you do that, there it is. And that will help us isolate and find the same packets as they traverse the box. The second thing you could do with the IP identifier is just simply right click, apply as filter, selected. And now that's the only two packets you see. So you can see this packet happened to be coming back to me. So these numbers are kind of reversed, but you still see those six milliseconds of latency. Um, and that's what we start to use is that common variable or value, uh, the common value in both packets so you can actually find which went where. Uh, but the thing I like to do is just go to view, time display format, and seconds since the beginning of the capture. And what will happen now is you'll see that there's six milliseconds, see the request, and there's the reply. Well, I don't, I don't want the request and the reply. I want the same request packet side by side so I can do the math. And all you have to do here is sort by the identifier. And when you do that, you'll notice, see, 13355, 13355, 6, 7, so on. So I can take this 55 guy 
16869, where'd that come from? And then you can see here as well, 16.869. So you can actually see that there was no time difference, which is kind of helpful to know. In this case, you can see 19.7 and 19.8. So that's about just, I don't know, let's just say 90 milliseconds of latency for that packet. But you gotta pay attention because even though these identifiers are the same, the different IPs might throw you off because again, it's a NAT box. So this is a very key way of grouping the data together. Um, the other thing that I just briefly want to throw out there is when we go through these trace files, it's imperative, with especially with NATing, uh, it's imperative to get different types of packets. So HTTP versus the ping might give you different results. You might find that with certain protocols, certain parts of the packet gets changed and with other protocols it might not happen. Um, and even this one's a good idea to look at this get command. So we'll see the get leaving my machine and then you can see it on the other side of the router one millisecond of latency. So that's it. So hopefully that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.